Okay, so in the last video, um, we went over the light dependent part of photosynthesis. It was pretty long and pretty complicated. However, this next part is much more simple. So this is gonna be much shorter. At the end of the last um, slide, we had finished the light dependent part of photosynthesis and we had created some ATP and we created a bunch of high energy electrons. They were in a taxi called NADPH and we made some oxygen. Um, so uh, what we're gonna do next is deal with this. So the um, ATP and the uh, NADPH is gonna be used for the light independent part of photosynthesis, which is called the Calvin cycle. And then the oxygen that was also created uh, is the waste, and that's just gonna diffuse out of the leaf, enter the atmosphere and hopefully go up your nose. So the Calvin, the, the Calvin cycle, also known as the Benson-Calvin cycle over the, uh, after the two scientists that described it. It looks really complicated. Um, you don't have to memorize any of these names um, and all, any of the complicated parts here. I'm gonna go through the very simple very simple part. So, first of all, uh, for the Benson-Calvin cycle, we're actually going to make glucose, which is the main point of photosynthesis in the first place. And so we start off with three molecules of carbon dioxide. All right, so that's up here. That's what we're going to put in. And each, if you think about it, each of those molecules of carbon dioxide has one carbon in it. So it's right, currently we have uh, three carbons, but they're in three separate molecules, CO2, one CO2, second CO2, and the third CO2. Uh, we're going to feed these um, CO2 molecules into this um, chemical, into this chemical called Rubisco. There's a bunch of really complicated chemical reactions that happen. Uh, I'm not too worried about you understanding the very details of it, but ultimately what we're going to do is we're going to take the ATP that we created in the light reaction and we're gonna take the energy out of the ATP and use it to, tr it to glue together the three individual carbon dioxide molecules into one three carbon molecule that's all joined up. So here we have three separate carbons and three separate molecules. And here we have the three carbons, but they're all joined up in one molecule in a chain. Uh, so, to do that, it takes energy to join things together like that. This is an endergonic reaction. So joining things together, synthesizing, making something big and complicated, that takes energy. Where does the energy come from? It comes from ATP. And where does the ATP come from? It's the ATP that we made in the, uh, the light dependent reactions that we just went through. So we're spending all the energy that we just collected in the, in the last chapter, kind of the last slides that we talked about. So remember, ATP going to ADP plus P, that's exergonic. So this is energy out, and the energy that comes out is used to power these reactions. These are energy in reactions. These are endergonic going around this cycle, um, boosting the energy of these, of these molecules. So not only do we spend all the energy from the ATP that we've made in the first part of the reaction, we're also going to take all those high energy electrons. So remember all those electrons that are in here in a taxi. We're gonna, the, the taxi is gonna empty out its passengers and those electrons are gonna end up in this molecule. And that's why the ta taxi is now empty. So it went from being a full taxi, NADPH full of electrons, to an empty taxi, NADP plus. Where did the passengers go? Where did the electrons go? They got dumped in here. And they're helping to stick together this molecule glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. G3P is the actual final product of this cycle. So you put in three CO2s, you don't much of fancy chemistry, put in a bunch of energy, and you pull out one G3P, which has all three carbons glued together. And these bonds in between those carbons have a lot of energy in them. Where did the energy come from? Because you can't just create it. It must have come from somewhere. It came from here and it came from here. And now it's all trapped in here. Now this G3P is basically half of a glucose. So then you go through this cycle one more time. You put in three more CO2s, do some more of this, pull out another G3P. And when you've got two G3Ps, 
or two halves of a glucose, you can take the two and put them together and create a whole glucose. And that's why you have to put in six CO2s to make one glucose. That's the overall equation for photosynthesis. So what you really do is you put in three CO2s, make one half of a glucose, put another three CO2s in, make another half of a glucose. So for a total of six CO2s, you've made two halves, which is one whole glucose. And that is the end product of photosynthesis. There's a bunch of other fancy chemistry that goes on to keep this cycle going. But really, all you need to, all you need to, to understand and learn here is that you're going to feed in the carbon dioxide, you're going to glue it together with the energy from ATP and the electrons from NADPH, and you're going to end up with this glucose molecule that's going to be six carbons all stuck together with lots of energy trapped in those bonds. And that's why sugar has all those calories for us. Those calories are energy. The energy is trapped in the bonds of the molecule. The energy originally came from the sun because the energy was trapped by the chlorophyll, trapped in here, and then fed into here. And that is the uh, end of the story of photosynthesis, really. Um, I think that's the last of the slides. Um, basic overview here, and then a um, summary with the water and the CO2 that you put in. This is the electron transport thing we did, the light dependent reaction, then the light independent reaction, and the end result is the glucose ring. All right, well, I hope that helped a little. Um, there's plenty of practice on mastering biology, and uh, you can send questions to me or Alana. And uh, good luck. <laughs>